video. I'm going to approach the movie No Country for Old Men and The Counselor, both written by Cormac McCarthy, as astral myths. An astral myth places aesthetic and poetic metaphor, celestial or astron astronomical content above plot, narrative, or morals. I'm going to look at how dawn and time of day are in No Country for Old Men. Very. Pr there are a lot of repeated motifs in the movie No Country for Old Men. We're going to look at stars and time. The movie opens with a star, the sun. Then we get like a jillion stars. One, two, three, four, five, 15, 20, 25. I counted the stars in the movie just by here circling some of them. The sun, Hitachi, translates to sunrise. Stars and paintings. I think a lot could be done just going through the artwork in this movie. I will be doing that, I hope, in the future. Just a similar, just all the art, there's stars in the artwork. Guadalupe has 48 stars. Uh, she is kind of focused on behind moss at the end here. And uh, her stars have a sun and a moon. Here we have an actor who's famous for playing an astronaut in Northern Exposure. One hundred and forty one stars are what I counted. What does it mean? Flaming Star was a movie with Elvis Presley that Andy Warhol painted, and here we have that motif at the uh shootout. Now I'd like to look at time. The movie begins on June sixth, I believe. We can find that out because of some of the dialogue. This scene tells us that he's going out this morning and the courthouse opens. He gets back at Sunday at midnight. He tells us the courthouse house is opening Monday morning. On Monday, Sugar finds the telephone bill and it says June 5th. There are a lot of crowns in this movie, but not as many as there are in The Counselor, which we'll look at in a few minutes. The time that Woody Harrelson goes into the office is the same exact time days later when Sugar goes into the office. Either the clock is stopped or it suggests to me modular time. Modular time is when you could look at it on a clock from 0 to 12. The zero means that time wraps around on itself. The tarot card of Major Arcana in Blood Meridian starts at zero and goes to 22. Here we see that Sugar is the sun. He's the sky in the movie poster. Moss dies on Friday the 13th. There are tons of numbers in this movie, but I didn't deal with them with this. Here's an example of what I think is modular math or modular time. Moss coming into the front door of the Eagle Pass Hotel. And then he comes back in, he jumps out his window and comes running back in again. When Sugar's face is portrayed as the sun on the movie poster, I believe that is because he is the sun. He's not human, he is the sun. He's a metaphor as a character of the sun. Here comes Moss coming back through the building. In June 1980, a heat wave called a killer heat wave, hit Texas. I believe sugar is a metaphor for that, including that the movie poster even gives you a hint. Now we're going to talk about the counselor. In the movie poster of the counselor, 
Malkina is already center. Cameron Diaz is actually the center character of the movie. I wanted to see the process and to uh, try to ensure that the film was made uh, as closely as possible to the script of the film. Mm-hmm. So I thought the best way to do that would be to be on location, to be on the set. And uh, I, I come and they give me a, a screen to watch the, the scenes as they're shot. It's, it's time consuming. I don't know that I would want to do it again. It, it takes it takes a lot of time. I've been, I've been in Europe for about seven weeks now. The counselor contains constant references to navigation and travel. I was happy to see Cormac McCarthy say, there's a globe in the bedside table, horse riding, the town of El Paso has a star on the mountain. There it goes. Beheadings, stars, circles, repeat throughout the whole movie. Stars on the map. The flag, rather, there's a Bloody Mary. Circles. Butterflies on his shirt. Reiner's bar has a star. Headshots, stars on Heineken, motorcycles, stars, circles, Marco Polo. More and more headshots. Couldn't keep up with them. Decapitations, headshots, globes in his room. Circles, Corona, Crown, Crown and Headless connected. McCarthy may not remember why he used the number 117, but this movie length is 117 minutes. Malkina is a female character whose name means bad cat. Her tattooed leopard spots running down a third of her body and pet cheetahs align her to the Egyptian goddess Seshat. Seshat is always depicted with a cheetah or leopard spots whose markings were perceived as constellations. A spotted feline was considered a symbol of eternity and the night sky. She was the, her name means someone who is a scribe, which the counselor also means scribe. McCarthy described this movie like a Greek tragedy and a device of tragedy as an offstage death while revealing that who he thought was the protagonist was actually a false protagonist. Carl Jung said, The mind must be separated from the body, which is equivalent to voluntary death. The aim of this separation was to free the mind from the influence of the bodily appetites and the heart's affections and to establish a spiritual position which is subordinate to the turbulent sphere of the body. This leads at first to a dissociation of the personality and a violation of the merely natural man. Penelope Stage's off-stage death allows us to see Malkina as a protagonist. Malkina represents the return and restoration of a sky goddess rather than as a literal human character. work through, I've been working through Blood Meridian, and that Cormac McCarthy's books and works have time-based or calendrical uh, suppressed design inside of them that isn't the main point of the story, but was there, is there, that could be used for working on memory or memorization. And if you are interested in any more of my written papers that I've presented at conferences, you can find me at my artist site, Patreon, Candy Minks at Patreon.